once we finished talking about the profit maximizing output for the perfect competitor, how do we know this is a perfect competitor? He's got a flat, horizontal, perfectly elastic demand curve. We talked earlier about he looks for point alpha, the intersection of marginal cost and marginal revenue, to determine how many units to produce. That's the first step in virtually every analysis of the graphs. Find point alpha, find the best quantity to produce. But after that, there's a second absolutely essential step. It says, if he produces that quantity at point alpha, will he make a profit for the firm overall for all of his sales? So the second question is, what's the firm's profitability at alpha? Not just on the, the number, the unit produced at alpha, but on the overall for the company, out of all of its sales, is it overall going to be profitable or not? And what we have to do then, step two here, we have to look at the demand curve, which is also sometimes called the price line, same thing. We have to look at the demand curve and the average total cost curve. And we know what the average total cost curve looks like. We know what the demand curve looks like for this perfectly competitive firm. And those are the only two curves I want to put on the graph right now. So once the firm is working along and it says, well, I'll throw the other graph up here. Okay, here's marginal cost. You tell me, where's alpha? You got alpha identified, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Remember, when the demand curve is flat, it's the same thing as marginal revenue. It's a little sloppy there. So this is alpha. Alpha tells us quantity. And so we want to ask, is this company at this level of output going to be profitable? And what we have to, to gauge is their total revenue, their total cost, and the difference between the two to see if it's profitable or losing money. Total revenue is price times quantity. In this case, 60 units, $6. We know their total revenue is $360. What's their total cost? Well, to read total cost, if you remember back to your cost chapters, you take the level of output, read up to the average total cost curve, and read over. Let's say that this is $4.50. Okay? So the cost per unit is $4.50. And they're producing 60 units. 60 times $4.50. How much is that? That's getting complicated, isn't it? I think that's $270. Okay? 6 times 4 is 24 plus 30 or 3. So what do we know is the difference? What is their profit or loss? It's 360 in revenue minus 270 in costs. It's a $90 profit. Everybody see that? What that means is they're making $1.50 a piece, this distance right here, from 450 to 6, $1.50 a piece on each unit times 60 units. So their profit is 60 times a dollar and a half which is a $90 profit. And if we showed that on the graph, we would say their profit is this shaded purple area right here. All right? What we're going to be looking for on all of these graphs then, after we find marginal cost equals marginal revenue, what I call point alpha, what we're going to look for is the demand curve and the marginal cost curve and examine their relative positions at point alpha, at the level of output that the, that the company is charged. For example, let's draw this again just for a second. What's going on for the company if they operate right here, Q1? Well, at Q1, when we read up, what do we see? The price is more than the average total cost. So they're making a profit. That's also true here at Q2. There's the average cost. There's the price. They're making a profit. What's going on here, out here at Q3? At Q3 level of output, if they were to choose that, their total cost or average cost would be the same as their total revenue. That is, their average total cost would be the same as their price. When that's true, when price equals average total cost, we say the company is breaking even. So the company break e breaks even here, point A, and by the way, 
it would also break even if it produced over here, Q4, at point B. Both those would be break even points. Total revenue equals total cost. Is there any profit in there? The answer is yes, there is an accounting profit. The accounting, accountant would measure profit there. But for the economist, that normal rate of return or normal profit is an implicit costs, cost. And so we say you're not making anything more than your implicit cost. You're breaking even. Now, let's go one more step. What if I operate out here at uh, Q5? I look up here and I see what? My price is below my average total cost. My cost per unit is more than my price per unit. When price is less than average total cost, I'm operating at a loss. Okay, so far? So again, you look at marginal cost and marginal revenue, find their intersection. At that level of output, what I call point alpha, at that level of output, what is their price compared to their average total cost? A couple of other quick examples. What would you tell me about this company? There's their demand curve, and there's their average total cost curve. How's life? Life's terrible, because I don't care what level of output you pick. Any level you want, when you read up, what do you see? You see that the price the company is going to earn for the product is always going to be less than the cost of the product. Anywhere you go, price is below average cost. So when you see the entire average total cost curve above the demand curve, this is a loser. This company cannot make any economic profit or even a normal profit. Okay. Let's try this one. What if you saw this? There's the demand curve. There's the average total cost curve. And they barely touch each other right there. What can you tell me about this company? What's the best they can do? At their very best level of output, if they happen to be right here, what will happen? Are they making a loss, taking a loss, making a profit, breaking even? Well, price equals average total cost. So at this level of output, they are breaking even. Again, what does that mean? It means they're making enough profit, accounting profit, to stay in business. But they're not making any economic profit, profit over and above the normal rate of return. Okay? When this curve is tangent to this curve or line. Okay? By the way, where's the marginal cost curve in this graph? In fact, it goes through the lowest point on the average total cost curve. Just like that. Is this point alpha. Is it the intersection of marginal cost and marginal revenue? Is it the intersection that tells us the profit maximizing quantity? And the answer is, yes it is, because the demand curve is flat. It's the same as the marginal revenue curve. Therefore, this is point alpha. Therefore, this is the right output. And therefore, the firm is breaking even. Okay? How are we doing? That's enough for now.